All right, before we begin, you know, getting into all these cool lick ideas and different phrasing ideas that we can do, I want to spend a quick moment and talk about pressure on the hand. Now, when I'm doing scales and stuff, I like to, or just jamming in general, unless I'm bending, I'll wrap my thumb up around here, which I'll go over later when I do vibrato. But nine times out of 10, my thumb is right on the back of the neck, you know, and you can cut, it's kind of hard to see it, but um, right there, there you go. <laughs> so it's kind of a C shape and you want to attack the notes on the tips of your fingers nine times out of 10. Now there are times when you'll want to flatten your fingers a little bit to mute out of the strings and such and so forth. But in this instance, I want you to concentrate on playing on the tips of your fingers. Now what you can also do, and this I highly recommend, is take the string and we're going to talk about pressure because one of the things I notice most with students when they're first starting out or even if they're intermediate players, they struggle too much with this hand. They apply too much pressure, which can do one of two things. It can fatigue your hand and it can make you sound out of tune. Now watch when I just press too hard. Listen to the string and the pitch. Right? You hear it? The intonation of the note gets off. It almost it bends sharp. So what I want you to start to do, and do this with every finger, is touch the string as light as you possibly can. And pick the note and apply minute amounts of pressure until you get it to fret. And learn how much strength and how little strength that is it takes to actually fret a note. Now if you're playing an acoustic, that's a whole different ball of wax. You know, you guys are a whole different animal and I respect you, but I sound like a first grader on an acoustic, so I'm sticking with electric. So here we go. Very minute. Every finger. Right, and just pick it, little, 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 little fret. And dude, I am barely, and dude S's, I am barely pressing down on the string. Now I have good action, and a setup is something I would highly recommend. You know, don't have it a mile off the fretboard. Get it down low to where it's, you know, just not fretting out. You know, visit your local, you know, guitar smith guy in your town and get your guitar set up. That's something that I would always do no matter what. But that being said, still the amount of pressure should not have to be that great. So work with that before you do anything. And your guitar playing and your stamina in your hand will thank you for it. Okay, so let's talk about one of my favorite things in guitar playing. It's vibrato. It's a very simple technique, and when used effectively, it can really add another dimension to your playing. That's one of the things I think as a guitar player separates somebody who's maybe beginner to intermediate to somebody that sounds like. Now, the technique may not be there, but to get you to sound more professional, I think vibrato is one of those things that really helps. So let's go over a really simple way to start to incorporate vibrato. I use my thumb as a pivot point, okay? It's almost like a hinge to a door, right? So what we're gonna do is wrap, you don't have to wrap it all the way around, but I just use my thumb as an anchor and then this part of my hand down here, if you notice where my palm and fingers connect, there's that knuckle right there and I use that as my other pivot point. So the vibrato doesn't come from your fingers doing this, it comes from your wrist rocking. Okay, that's just the way I like to do it. Now there's Clapton and a bunch of other guys that have no, you know, that there's nothing hinging their thumb. But for me, I found to get nice fluid vibrato, both narrow and wide, this is the easiest way for me. So remember, you're keeping your fingers stiff and letting your wrist rocking provide the vibrato. Okay, so when you're on a stationary note, not bending, the pitch is actually going to go up and back to the, to the normal pitch of the note, which is the exact opposite of when you're doing bending vibrato, where you're bending up to a pitch, coming down, and then back up. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Try to incorporate all of your fingers. Get fluid using all of your fingers. So let's take the uh, D string, fifth fret. We're going to slide up to that and just add a little bit of vibrato. Now what I'm doing there is on the E, A, and D strings, I will typically pull down. But if you notice, my finger isn't moving like this. My wrist is rocking. Do your second finger. 
Right? And oftentimes when I'm not using my first finger, I'll use my other fingers, you know, that are behind the finger that I'm using for support, to grab on that string for more of a mechanical advantage, right? I'm not using the fingers again, but it's it's creating two fingers on the string now to help rock rather than just one. So that helps a lot as well. So those are some tips on vibrato. All right, so let's talk about bending now. Bending is another one of those key areas that really you'll notice from beginning to intermediate players to players who are more advanced. Bending to pitch is really important, right? You notice singing is where it's really apparent. If you go see a person that's singing and they're not quite hitting those notes, it really sticks out. So guitar is the same thing. When you don't reach the pitch of a note, although sometimes it can be a good thing, it's more of something you want to you know, throw in there every once in a while than something that's basically what you always do. So there's a quick and easy way to check pitch when you're on the G and the B strings. What you're going to do if you're on the G string and you're bending up a whole step, a whole step is two frets, right? Is you can check it by using the B string fifth fret. And what you do is you hit both strings at the same time. And when the waver stops between the strings, you'll know you're in pitch. Right? So you can hear the waver stop. Let's add a little gain here so you can hear it a little better. Right? It stops right there. So I know I'm in pitch. Now, with the B and E strings, the spread's a little bit different, but the technique is the same. So on the high E string, I'll be on the fifth fret. And on the B string, I'll be on the eighth fret, and you do the exact same thing. Right? So you get to where the waver of the string stops, and you'll know you're in pitch. Now, one other quick way to do it is if you're bending a whole step, go up two frets, listen to the pitch, and then bend. Now you want to get to the point to where you can bend right to the note. You know, it takes years to get great at it, but if you start while you're beginning, you'll be way ahead of the, the competition, right? Or not competition, but way ahead of, of your friends. <laughs> so, right, bending up to notes. Now there's also step and a half bends, which means you go a whole step, plus another half step. This is one of my favorites. It's in blues all the time and it really pulls on the ear. Right, so we're gonna. So what I did there was, I take the pitch of the 12th fret and make it sound like this G. So we're taking an E and going to a G. Now it is a stretch. I mean, it's it's hard to get there, but that's a really cool technique to incorporate. There's different spots in the A minor pentatonic. Like if you're at the B string 10th fret, there's another one. David Gilmour, Pink Floyd does that all the time, right? And there's another one. Ninth fret, if you're in A minor pentatonic, there's another one of those. And if you just think of it like that, that's the octave of the first one that we did. So another cool thing to do when you're learning your bends, right? You're bending on the eighth fret. Well, where is that same bend? Well, it's up here, the 12th fret. And what's cool is it's surrounded by uh, different notes that you can pick from. So you can get the same bend but now you're in a different spot that lets you access different riffs you couldn't access before. So if I'm doing, right? That kind of stuff. Now if I do it up here, you know, I can have those same riffs, but I also have that step and a half one we were talking about. So you can do like a, Right, so learn the bends in all the different spots on the neck and the different pentatonic patterns, and that will help you a lot. Now let's go over vibrato. So what we want to do, like I was saying before, 
if it's a stationary note, vibrato mean you're not bending, it's pulling it out of pitch. You know, you're pulling up and out. Right? Because you're raising the pitch and going back to normal. Right? Getting all the fingers in there. Same thing with bending. Be able to bend, you know, whole steps, half steps. Step and a half is hard, but with all your fingers. So if I can bend with all your fingers equally, it's really going to help because it'll open up a whole bunch of new playing ideas. Okay, so what we're going to do when we hit vibrato on a bend is you want to bend up to the pitch and then go down and up. So that's, you know, obviously a very exaggerated, slowed down version of that, which would be more like this in real time. Right? There's, I've used two notes that were stationary notes and one bent note. Now, if I didn't use vibrato in those bending, let's hear what it would sound like. You hear the difference in the feel? Much more vocal singing quality. So get into that habit of making bends a big part of your practice routine. It'll really help you in the long run and it'll really help you to sound more musical. The whole goal is to sound like a singer or a voice, something that has, you know, your, your phrases have melody. So you're kind of, you know, when you're doing a guitar solo or something like that, you're usually taking the place of the singer. So let's try to make our phrasing a little more vocal. So there's two other kind of bends I use all the time. I use quarter note bends. That's where I barely pull a note out. And you do that by just barely pulling just enough. Not quite a half step, but it really adds like a little pull on the ear. And a little bit more feel without having to do a dramatic bend, right? And then another one of my favorite bends is the half step bend. Now I'm going to show you how to apply all these different types of bends and riffs later. So I'm just giving you a brief explanation of different kinds of bends. Half step bend. Now if we, a whole step is up two frets, then a half step bend is obviously just making this note sound like this note. And where I love to do stuff like that is pulling the major note into the minor note. Right, and you get all those cool different licks. You can also use that in rhythm. Right, so it's not just limited to using in lead playing. A lot of these techniques, these bends and stuff like that, incorporated in your rhythm playing is just a little way to catch the ear, a little hook, right? So that's some words on bending.